Hey Booktube, welcome back to my channel. We're close to the end of day six on the rereadathon, and so far I have finished two books. Two books. I finished two pretty long books, so that's nothing to cry about. I finished Truly Madly Guilty, which is which was 412 pages, and I finished Boy Snowbird, which is 305 pages. So that's a combined total of more than 700 pages in six days. That's an average of 115 pages a day. Hmm. Probably not so good for a readathon, but you know what? I've been busy. Hashtag Rio 2016, hashtag Olympics. I've just been watching TV with my spare time. That's what I've been doing. So I haven't been reading as much as I probably could have. The books that I've read, I've enjoyed. So, I mean, I'll always be a reader. I'm not a TV watcher necessarily, I'm a reader. So yeah, you, you might like my shirt. This shirt was from the very first race that I ever did. Uh, this was at the New York, New Jersey, at the New York Giants Stadium, which is in New Jersey. And I did a 5K there and I got this shirt and I love it because it's my first, it was the first shirt I ever got for running. So I've been trying to get back into running. You will see that I've been adding a little bit of my work, my workouts and my running and my exercises into my videos because while I make these videos for you guys, I also make these videos for me to kind of chronicle what I'm doing, what's going on. And so, because I'm doing a little bit of a running streak, I feel like it's only authentic if I include all the parts of my life. So, that's it. So, I finished Boy Snowbird, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. What I... I gave this book four stars. When I started reading it, I didn't love it. I wasn't enjoying it all the way up to maybe about page 100. I wasn't enjoying it. Why? Because I already knew what the story was about. I typically don't read book blurbs. But when I read a book blurb, I don't expect the blurb to give me the entire story. So here's what the blurb says. It says, in the winter of 1953, Boy Novak arrives by chance in a small town in Massachusetts, looking she believes for beauty, the opposite of the life she's left behind in New York. She marries Arturo Whitman, a local, widow, a local widower, and becomes stepmother to his winsome daughter, Snow. A wicked stepmother is a creature Boy never imagined she'd become, but elements of the familiar tale of aesthetic obsession begin to play themselves out when the birth of Boy's daughter, Bird, who is dark-skinned, exposes the Whitmans as light-skinned of African-Americans passing for white. And even as boy, snow, and bird are divided, their estrangement is complicated by an insistent curiosity about one another. So, in these two paragraphs, it tells you that Boy Novak moves to Massachusetts. She marries this man who's a widower. She becomes a stepmother to his daughter. She has her own child, Bird. So it tells you who Boy, Snow, and Bird are. No surprise there. It tells you that the Whitmans are black, that Bird now is black, and that Artura and his family have been passing themselves off as white up until the point where their daughter is discovered to be black. Here's the problem with that description. On page, so I'm reading, right, because... I didn't really read the whole of the blurb, I just kind of scanned it. On page 6, I learned that her father is abusing her, which is why boy leaves home. On page 111 is where boy gets married to Arturo. So that thing in the blurb doesn't happen for 111 pages, except I've been reading for 111 pages. So all this time I'm reading, I know where the story is going. Right. On page 131, I learned Bird is born, and we learn that Bird is black. So her father is black because her mother isn't. No surprise there because it's all there in the blurb. On page 144, Snow is sent away from the house with her father and her stepmother and her sister. She's sent away from the house 
because her stepmother doesn't want her there. So for 144 pages, I'm reading, I'm trying to get into the story, except nothing is being revealed to me because everything has been told to me in the blurb. The book, number one, the book is mistyped because it is classified as a fantasy. It's classified as being magical realism. It's classified as being a fairy tale retelling. It is none of those things. The book is really, really good. The reason that the book doesn't seem really good in the beginning is because we're told to expect something else. Helen Oyeyemi, she is a really gifted writer. She's a gifted storyteller. You could tell the imagery that is laid and overlaid where the Snow White story, which starts, the only thing I know about Snow White's story is that the stepmother kept saying mirror, mirror on the wall was the fairest of them all. That's all I know about Snow White. And really, that's the only thing I think that is reflected in this book that is similar to the Snow White story where the stepmother is concerned about mirrors and reflections and she has this bad relationship with her stepdaughter because she is concerned about appearances. <sighs> the book as fairy tale fantasy is a failure, but the book as literary fiction is a roaring success. If you try to compare Helen Oyeyemi to Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who is the expert at magical realism, then of course it is a failure. But if you compare Helen Oyeyemi to herself, as a literary fiction writer, she is amazing. She deserves all the prizes that she's gotten. And so, if I was Helen, if I was Helen Oyeyemi, I would fire my publisher and I would fire my editor or whoever it was whose recommendation it was to place this book as a fantasy and fairy tale. The book should have been touted as a literary fiction. And all the people who are looking for literary fiction would have flocked to this book and loved it. So that's what I didn't like about the book. The blurb number one gave way too much information away. <laughs> way too much information. It didn't fit with the genre that it was, that it said that it was supposed to be off. And the characters are really terrible, except that's not so much a loss. It is actually a win because I mean, who doesn't want to read about characters who are terrible people? Terrible people as characters make really good stories. So that is not necessarily a failure. I think that that is a plus. What I did like about the book, um, the imagery, she writes very similar stories to the stories that I like to write. What I really did love about this book was the comparison between the generation, the generational curses where you could see um, the effect of boy not experiencing her mother's love with her inability to love her stepchild and her own child, her inability to relate to women because she didn't have that foundational relationship with her own mother. Um, the overlay, like I said before, the overlay of the imagery where things were spoken about in one way but really meant something else, where characters kept coming back and you know just their place in the story how things were mentioned but not really explained so we had the reader had to work some things out i really enjoyed that in a book um the themes you know there was a very strong theme about women's relationship about race issues because this book takes place in the 1950s and 60s and maybe 70s and there was all the women's struggles, women's suffrage, abortion, illegal abortion, um, rape, racial segregation, racial profiling. Um, there were so many themes. One of the things, one of the things that I didn't particularly love, there were a lot of characters. There were a lot of female characters, very strong females, very some very weak males which sometimes happens, you know. I'm not trying to say negative things about men or women. I'm just saying that, that sometimes that is the reality in a lot of cultures. And, you know, this book, I think, was such a win. Such a win. <laughs> Except for all the things 
that tried to pull it down. So at the end of the day, I gave this a strong four star rating. And it's a book that I feel like I will go back and read this copy I got from the library, but I saw it on sale at Barnes and Noble. And I'm thinking about going back to get my own copy because this is a writer that I think would be pretty famous. And it would be nice to have one of her first novels in my collection. So I gave this four stars. I didn't, I don't regret reading it at this point. You know, it, I enjoyed reading this book. I, it started off a little weird, a little confusing, a little slow, a little feeling like I'm way behind because all these things that I know are supposed to happen haven't happened yet. But it redeemed itself in the middle. I didn't particularly love the way it ended, but that plot twist I did not see coming and that is something that I really enjoyed because the writer, she had me guessing up until the very last 10 pages, guessing how the story was going to end. So that for me, four star read. Tonight I will start with Love in the Time of Cholera and that is going to be my first reread of the reread of fun so I will I'll get started on this one I am Gabriel Garcia Marquez is one of my favorite writers so I'm looking forward to really diving into this book it's 348 pages I already know the gist of the story because I've read the book before and I also watched the movie so this is not going to be um this is not going to be new so it's going to be a slightly it's actually going to be a lot like this because this book i knew what was going to happen because of the blurb this book i know what's going to happen because i've read it before but i know that i will enjoy reading this one because of the language because of the way gabriel garcia marquez writes because i am so familiar with his writing style and there's quite a few characteristics that he employs in a lot of his fiction that I really enjoy. And so I'll tell you more about this book once I have completed it. So that's it for me for day six of the Reread of Fun. I hope you enjoyed watching this little vlog. It probably rambled. It probably went really long. It probably went a lot longer than I expected. But what can I do? So that's it for me for tonight. I will talk to you guys tomorrow with another video about day seven of the Reread of Fun. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're reading right now. What you're, if you're doing a reading challenge or what it's like, what is the last thing that you read and how you found it? Are you finding books? How do you find the books? Like where do you get your reading recommendations from? Leave me a comment down below and let's chat. So talk to you later. Bye.